Hi. Hello. Welcome to our booth. My name's Mitch Koffel. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Nanoramic Laboratories. And we're at the show this year with a couple of different products and what we hope are exciting products. The main focus for us at the show is twofold. One is our new electrode technology called Neocarbonics. And this Neocarbonics electrode technology is applicable not only for our supercapacitors and ultracapacitors, but also for battery electrodes, both cathode and anode on the battery electrode side. The other new product that we're introducing is a thermal interface material. All of our R&D efforts are focused around nanomaterials, and this thermal interface material is more of a polymer nanomaterial. We've been able to develop it with both a electrically insulating and an electrically conductive version, and our thermal conductivity is higher than most other things that we see on the market. So we're pushing thermal conductivities that are 20 watt per meter Kelvin to 50 watt per meter Kelvin, well above most of the materials on the market, and we still expect to be cost effective with those. So these markets are huge, right? Is battery, what is this? Yes, yes, so our electro technology would be used, again, not only in supercapacitors or ultracapacitors, but also for batteries and the battery market is absolutely enormous. There are so many large battery manufacturers and then also the, the large car companies with electric vehicles are interested in new electro technology. So could, could you grab this one, for example? Yes. So where in the battery does it go and how does it change the battery market? Sure, so what this does is this actually goes inside of the battery cell. It's one of the electrodes that's used to create either the positive or negative, the cathode or anode inside the battery. So they're like wrapped around in small Cor that's, spires in That's there? correct. So in this type of battery cell, the electrode would be wrapped in a circle or in a spiral to be put down inside is of Is that, that like battery how batteries cell. are made usually? Or yes, what, this what's is, different about the way you're doing th it? This is very typical in the way batteries are made. What's different is that our electrode has better energy density and lower resistance. So some of the benefits to the end customer is being able to charge your car or charge your power tool or charge your cell phone faster without generating heat in the battery, which also gives you longer life for the battery as well. Is that lithium ion or is it different? What is it? It's this? applicable to lithium ion. That's our main focus right now for all the different lithium ion chemistries because lithium ion is the largest segment of the market currently. So what does that mean? You load the lithium ion in this material? Or where did, what is, what's happening? Yes, yeah, so, so our electrode is a technology or a process and we can take these active materials, whether it's a uh, NMC positive electrode, an LCO positive electrode, or we can look at the anode side of the equation, whether that's carbon or silicone, and we can do better loading with lower resistance using our process and our technology. Uh, what, what are you showing here? What is this stuff there? So these are some of our legacy products. When the company was first founded and we first came out, we were using our electrode in what we call ultra capacitors or super capacitors. The first things we looked at were very, very extreme environment types of applications. So in oil field applications where you need very high temperature, 150 C, we just came out with a product for aerospace and military that operates down to minus 55 C. So when an aircraft is at altitude, you don't need to install a battery and a heater blanket and a control system for the heater blanket. You can just use one of our ultra capacitors as is with no heater blanket required. One of these or one of these? And any of these can be made into a low temperature format. This particular format was developed focused on cube satellites. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to combine the energy storage with the actual wall or structure of the cube satellite. So now you've got a situation where these can form the wall but they also form your energy storage portion. Provides a dual function for the customer. Are you in space or is it just development? Right now that's in development. We're looking for a final partner to take it to space for us. A lot of this was developed under research grants from NASA, Department of Defense, and Department of Energy. So when you look at those awesome uh, satellites that uh, 
uh, Elon Musk is sending up to mm -hmm. cover the whole globe, would this yes. be relevant? Yes, quite relevant. So how does it help the satellite to have this? So in, instead of the satellite having one structure as a wall and another internal structure as their energy storage, we can do both. So our energy storage becomes the wall of their cube satellite. And you talk about battery and ultra capacitor as two different things, right? Yes, correct. So, but you are totally in both. Yes. Uh, and uh, how far is this from being huge? Uh, what's next? So the next thing is to really commercialize the product. Most of the research and development has been done. We have some customers for the product, but what we're looking at doing right now is forming partnerships with much larger companies so that we can expand and get this uh, product to market. And we can do that either through our own internal growth, we can do that through licensing, or we can do that through technology transfer. How do you change the electric uh, vehicle market, for example? You, are you really talking about more capacity, faster charge and everything? Yes, so the, the capacity increase that we're looking at really depends on how big the battery pack is in the vehicle. It's hard to extrapolate, but just to give an order of magnitude, we're talking about something that would give you something in the range of 10 to 20 percent longer drive in terms of the, the miles that you drive on a typical basis. But one of the real big benefits for us is since our resistance is lower and we generate less heat, you'll be able to charge your battery faster. So instead of having to take 30 minutes or an hour for your electric vehicle, we may be able to cut that time in half. We may even be able to reduce it by 60 or 70 percent. That changes everything. If you can right. charge your battery in 10 minutes, Exactly. There's no need for what I've been talking about, battery swapping. That's right. You, you, you might not need it. That's correct. That's, that's what we're driving for. But it is really hard to push so much power through the cable that, and, and uh, uh, like having, even like having the infrastructure to push so much power through, that's another challenge. That's a whole other challenge. So we're focused on solving the battery portion of that challenge, but you're absolutely correct. The rest of that ultra-fast charging has to do with the other infrastructure that's out there. Because there may be a limitation or a bottleneck in the cables, in the connectors, in the actual uh, delivery of that power to the grid. And I see in your video there was an airplane. So are you going to be yes. enabling the electric airplanes? Yes, yeah, so what we're looking at right now is working with people that are dealing with the fully electric airplanes. Typically when an airplane takes off, it need, requires large power surges, and because it requires those large power surges, batteries don't perform very well under that type of application. A ultracapacitor or a hybrid lithium ion capacitor is a much better choice for the takeoff power required. So is that the main challenge to make passenger electric aircraft, is how much power is delivered to the motors or something like that, right? There's several, this is their issue right now? Right, it's not capacity there, there's necessarily. Several, there's several challenges, and one of those is delivering this high amount of current on the very front end when they need maximum power. And We've, how do you help in there? Right, so because of our electrode, we are able to deliver that power more quickly with less heat than a battery would. So that totally is something that maybe you're talking with Airbus and Boeing about. Correct. Who's the first one between Airbus and Boeing who's going to bring the electric <laughs> A320 or the electric uh, Boeing 737? I, when is it coming? Is it, it within five years or it, what? If, if I knew that, I would be a very, very wealthy man already. Uh, right. I, I really don't know who's going to have the first breakthrough. But it should be the top priority for them, right? It is a very high priority for all of those like people. It should be like huge. Yes. And how about the this part here? Mm -hmm. um, so which part of the industry are you changing with this? So with our thermal interface materials, any piece of electronics out there, when you operate it, will typically generate heat. And heat is something that destroys the life of an electronic part. So what we try to do is we use our materials to take the heat and we wick it or absorb it away from that electronic component. When we keep the electronic component cooler, you get better performance and you get longer life. So is like the case? Where, where in the electronic component are you? Around the so, uh, chips and stuff? Yeah, so the, the best example I can give you is the IC chip. 
right? So you've got an IC chip, uh, integrated circuit chip in your phone or on your laptop computer. And when you use the device, that particular chip gets very hot. And as that chip gets hot, its performance decreases and its life decreases. So we're trying to uh, provide a material that will draw the heat away from that hot chip, keep it cooler, give you better performance and give longer life. So it's like a heat sink or something you put on the chip? Yes, so we, we are the interface between the chip itself and the heat sink. So sometimes uh, people glue some kind of weird thing when they put the... Yes. Uh, yeah, a lot of, you'll, you'll see some of those things like conductive paste or gels or some of those kinds of things. And those are messy to apply, number one. And they also don't have anywhere near the thermal conductivity that we have. Typically, that kind of product has a thermal conductivity that's 5 or maybe 10 watt per meter Kelvin. And we're looking at something that's 20 to 50 watt per meter Kelvin. So we're five times to maybe 10 times more thermally conductive. So you just put one of these on top of the chip? Right. Yep. And it is flexible so that it can conform. It's easy to, to put it on? Yes. It, it has a little bit of tackiness to it. It's not, it's not gluey to where you put it on and then you could not peel it back off. It's just got a little bit of tack. So you could place it on. And if you needed to rework your PC board later on, you could pull it right back off. So this will enable to run all the electronics much faster, overclock everything, and then everything it, will be fine? It would help, yes. It It'll would help. help It would help reduce the heat and allow you to do the overclocking and overdriving of an electronic. Component. So is this similar material when you talk about running the batteries faster, higher power and everything? Mm -hmm. Is it kind of the similar kind of nano stuff? We, all of our research revolves around nanomaterials and development on nanomaterials. But in some cases, it's nanopolymers. In other cases, it's nanocarbons. In other cases, it's another type of nanomaterial altogether. We're just looking at what is the problem, how can we solve the problem, and how can we develop a technology to implement. So uh, what's next? Uh, partnering up with all the big companies in the world? Or what's, what's, what's... Yes, so, uh, so next steps are looking at the very large battery companies as well as the large electric vehicle companies and partnering with them and getting them interested and then using our technology and our process on all of their electrode manufacturing. How long time have you been doing this, showing this stuff? So the company has been around for 10 years and we've been doing the ultra capacitor, super capacitor electrode for probably four or five years. And we just realized through our development projects about a year ago that our technology and process was applicable to the battery world. So this is a new process, it's a new technology that we're bringing into the battery space. So who's making the best batteries in the world? Is it Panasonic or the Chinese or who's, who's best? It, it really depends on the chemistry and the technology and how you define best. There are certain companies that have better energy density, there are certain companies that have better power delivery, there are certain companies that have better quality then there are other companies that have the best price. So you've got all these different factors and it's very difficult to come out with one single answer for a best battery overall. Nice, and hopefully some of them are run here at this show. Yes, um, there, are, there are some of the battery manufacturers here at this show. Some are exhibiting, some are just attending as uh, customers or uh, attendees for the exhibition. And where are you based? Company's based out of Boston, Massachusetts.